is God's tool for the total transformation of one's destiny. Get ready to encounter truth as you listen to this timely message by God's veritable servant, Prophet Eric Oklu Pasley. Father, thank you for your word. As we are about to hear your word, grant us understanding. In Jesus' name. Amen. I didn't hear your amen. amen. Jesus revealed. Okay, Jesus revealed. Truth is not how or what we defined it to be. Truth is what God has revealed and declared it to be. An understanding of the Old Testament is impossible without reference to Christ. Are you here? When Jesus resurrected or when Christ resurrected, he walked with two disciples on the road to Emmaus. And he expressed his opinion that they were slow to believe all that the prophets have said. The reason being that they were talking about something the prophet has said and they did not believe in what they were saying. Then Jesus, according to the book of Luke, said, the Bible said that beginning from Moses, Jesus took them through Bible studies and began to tell them the things that concern himself. Now, when you say beginning from Moses, Moses is the writer of the book of Genesis. Moses was not there when the God was creating or when God began the beginning. The beginning didn't begin with God. God, it was not the beginning that brought God into existence. God existed before the beginning. The word beginning is the word we use in our time frame because there is nowhere in the Bible it is written that God created angels. Are you here? But when God was creating, there was no record that he created angels. That means that God created angels at a time frame that was not recorded in the Bible. That means that angels were even created before the beginning began. So Jesus began to tell them beginning from Moses and if you say beginning from Moses that means that he took the book of Genesis and began to show them the things concerning himself in that book. Are you here? You see, one of the things you need to understand is that for instance the book of Genesis was received by Moses in a metaphoric language. Are you here? Moses received the thing and you see, when you receive something and you are communicating, assuming God gives me a dream and gives you to a dream and we are supposed to write it on a paper, the way I will write it will be different from the way you write it. That is why some of the things in the book of Genesis must be decoded. Are you here? Like for instance, there were two trees in the garden. It must be decoded for you to understand. But that is not my message for preaching today. Are you here? So, Jesus is the key that unlocks all the treasures in the Old Testament. Because outside Jesus, now listen to me, the, I've told you before that the Old Testament is full of shadows, prophecies, and types. Are you here? Now, when you see a shadow, that means that there is a reality. Because you only see a shadow of a reality. Jesus is in the Old Testament. But he was in the Old Testament concealed. But he was not concealed in such a way that you cannot unveil him and see him. But you can only unveil him and see him in the light of the New Testament. Are you here? Now, for instance, let me give you an example. 
you will never know that the rock that gave Israel water in the wilderness was not a rock it was a person until you come into the new testament so it is only in the new testament that that thing is decoded it is only in the new testament you see what the manna is the manna they ate the bible said that the manna they ate was angels food and that manna when they ate it none of them was feeble but when jesus came he made reference to the fact that our forefathers ate manna in the wilderness and died but he is the living bread so that manna was a shadow or a type of the reality that was about to come so seeing christ in the old testament is the key that unlocks the message of the scripture including the old testament hallelujah so if you don't see christ in the overall analysis of the old testament you are missing the message now let me tell you that is why you should fear people who takes principles out of the old testament for instance let me give you an example the dangerous prayer people pray most of the dangerous prayers are from the book of psalms it's from the book of psalms things david was saying but when david was talking david was going through a situation but when he was going through that situation god moved him prophetically to talk about what christ will go through in his situation so david said something he said my friend who i eat with I go into the house of the Lord with has betrayed me. As at that time, something happened to David and David was talking. But God was using his situation prophetically to talk about Jesus and Judas Iscariot. I have told you one of the things that makes the Bible very interesting. is that the Bible was written by different authors at different time intervals and some of them were 1600 but when the materials were collected together there was only one message inside and that is Christ are you here that is Christ When you look at the Old Testament, there are three sessions in the Old Testament. There is the law, there is the prophets, and there is the Psalms. And in each of these books and sessions, we see a representation of the Messiah or a representation of Jesus Christ. In the law, in the prophets, and in the Psalms. For instance, when Philip met Nathaniel, and wanted to talk about Jesus or wanted to advertise Jesus Christ. And when Philip wanted to advertise Jesus Christ on GTV or UTV Ghana, this is what he said about Jesus Christ. He said, come and see the one whom the prophets and the law spoke about. So the Old Testament is divided into prophecy psalms and the law prophets psalms and the law all this session when you look at their individual messages is about christ it's a representation of christ so that is why the bible is a christocentric book with a christocentric message are you here are you okay okay when you look at second timothy chapter 3 i think from verse 15 14 and 15 or something like that. Paul wrote something to Timothy. He said, and from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures 
Because the Holy Scriptures is able to make you wise unto salvation in Jesus Christ. Let me ask you a question. When Paul was writing to Timothy that thou shalt have known the Holy Scriptures, was there a New Testament? Was there a New Testament? The only book that was available was what? The Old Testament. And even that one, it was not brought together like the way we have it. So when Paul was saying that, when Paul was writing to Timothy that from a child thou have known the holy scriptures, that scripture, holy scripture there was the Old Testament. And Paul is trying to say that in the Old Testament or in the holy scriptures, there is salvation inside. And salvation is a person. Because the mission statement of Jesus Christ is to come and save his people from their sin. So Paul was telling Timothy that the content of of the message in the Old Testament is pointing to a person that will bring salvation. I feel like preaching. Are you here? So I've given you scriptures. I've given you the one in Timothy. I've told you about the John, I think John chapter 5 verse 39 where one time Jesus even said, he said read the scriptures you think you have eternal life inside them, but they are they that testify of me. In other words, I am the subject matter of the scripture. I am the... When you zoom the scripture or the principal person is me. Are you here? So, Paul is trying to tell us clearly that not only is Christ in all the scriptures but that he confirms that he is Christ is in the scripture are you here with me now let's come to our text in the beginning when you read John chapter 1 verse 1 to 3 he said in the beginning was the word the word was with god and the word was god so when the bible say in the beginning that means that in that beginning there in the book of genesis chapter 1 verse 1 christ was there so in other words christ was present now listen in the beginning god created now when john came he didn't talk about virgin mary he began to talk about a mystery. And in that mystery was about the fact that in the beginning was the word. That means that and the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word became flesh. Who became flesh? Christ. So if in the beginning Christ is the word the word was with God and the word was was God it means that when Christ when God gave the vision to Moses to begin to write the book of Genesis and Moses said in the beginning God that means that in that beginning Christ was there because Christ is even God. That's what the word of God says. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. So, Christ was there before the beginning began. And ladies and gentlemen, because Christ was there before the beginning began, you were also there before the beginning began. Because in the original plan of God, God has chosen you in Christ before the beginning began. I, I, I feel like preaching something today. In the beginning, listen, the devil is late. The devil is late. Because you are not a product of accident. So far as God is concerned, he thought about you. You are not an afterthought of God. Listen to me. Jesus was not an emergency plan or Jesus was not plan B after 
Adam and Eve sinned against God. Jesus was God's plan A before the foundations began. If you have Bibles, let's read some scriptures for you to understand what I'm saying. Jesus is not God's emergency plan. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. Are you there? 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. Who has saved us and called us with an holy calling not according to our works but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in Jesus Christ before the world began. So before, oh, kaloha tabaha. I feel like speaking in tongues. Before my mother and my father even didn't meet. When my grandfather to the hundred generation even didn't exist. God already saved me, thought about me, considered me in his plans, called me in a person called Jesus before the world began. I don't know who I'm preaching to. Because if I were you and I hear this, I'll be so excited. That means that, ladies and gentlemen, even a woman when she is pregnant, she will start buying pampers. She will start buying baby things. Anytime she goes to town and she sees a dress that is very nice, she will begin to think. She will begin to imagine especially when she knows the gender of the child, that this dress will look nice on the child. Why do you think that the things that are a need in your life will take God several years to fix? Because you are not an emergency plan. So far as God is concerned, he has planned for you in Christ before you came. Oh, the budget to bring you up or the budget to make you enjoy your life, God has already planned it. I prophesy in, you shall walk in the goodness of God. I feel like preaching. He has called us. And you know He has called us in Christ before the world began. And Sana, we are see. When you have that mentality, listen. You can go for an interview, you don't get a job. You are still happy. Because you are chosen. You are the beloved of God. You are not an accident. Family planning didn't fail and you were brought. There were people that their parents are doing family planning. They are on pills, but they still came. Because in God's original plan, you must come. I don't, I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning. If your Bible stands to 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 20. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 20. Are you there? We can, we can read from verse 19. But with the precious bark of Jesus as of the lamb without blemish and without spot. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world but was manifest in these last days for you so God Jesus now listen so I'm trying to argue as if I'm writing thesis that Jesus is almost everywhere in the Bible So, before time began, Ephesians chapter 1, 4 and 5. Can I have somebody read for me? According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Verse 5. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Amen. Now, so the Bible is trying to tell us that even before sin came into the system, God's original plan was that he will look at a man in Christ. Are you here? He will look at a man in Christ. That is what the Bible is trying to tell us. So, like I said, 
Christ was not God's emergency plan B. If Christ was God's emergency plan B, then the devil took God by surprise. If Christ is God's emergency plan B, then God is not all-knowing. Are you here? If Christ is God's emergency plan B, then God must resign from the throne. But, God knew even before sin came, that man, that is why Paul, I think Paul in his writing says something that if the devil had knew he would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Because you see, the devil, you see, the devil is a very stupid guy. Because the reason why the devil is a very stupid guy is that anytime he's fighting you, he's fighting you into something God has prepared for you. There are people who never develop a prayer life until a sickness hits their body. That is when you can see them go to God and they pray. And by the time God heals them, they have developed a strong prayer life. And that shows the stupidity of the devil because he has used that situation to train you in the area of prayer. I don't know who I'm preaching to. The reason why he's a foolish guy, the reason why people are foolish sometimes is because they don't know the future. That is why you can when people do certain things today because they don't know the future of their action they do it. It is only when the action they have done or the, the, the error they have committed is waiting for them 10 years and they get into 10 years of their life and the error is telling them at their face then they see their stupidity 10 years ago. Because the devil does not know tomorrow. Listen, as we sit here, the devil does not know you buy a car tomorrow. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. We hope you have been blessed by this timely message. Make a date with us this and every Wednesday, 9 a.m. at the Living Fountain Baptist Church, Teshinongwa, near Fertilizer Factory. You can follow us on Facebook and YouTube at Prophet Eric O. Pasley. And on Instagram at Prophet Eric underscore O underscore Pasley. Or you can call us on 054-714-120. See you in church.